All you do is you prepare as thoroughly as you can. The guys play their asses off. Uh, playoffs? What are you talking about? Playoffs? You kidding me? Playoffs? I just hope we can win a game. Another game. Listen, we're talking about practice. Not a game, not a game, not a game. We're talking about practice. That you, you probably won't play it again. I bet I do. Okay. Correct. Yeah, the rounds go, brothers and sisters. This is Skull World, brought to you by Minnesota Sports Talk. I'm your host, Dave. You can follow me on TikTok, Twitter, and TikTok. Let's go. <laughs> so Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook, at Skull World. This is Skull Rants, again, brought to you by Minnesota Sports Talk. I got Travis from Viker Podcast on here. This is the second time I tried starting the show. <laughs> so hopefully we did it right. Travis, what's up, man? <laughs> what's going on, man? I appreciate you having me on here. It's, it's an uh, honor. You saw how you saw how the sausage is made, and it's not made very well <laughs> behind the scenes here. And I appreciate you sticking with me. Oh yeah. But uh, hey, we got we already got thirteen people in, and make sure it, if you're watching right now, you're live on either Twitter, switch it over to YouTube. Come join the chat. Tell me who's in the in here. Oh my God, we got Johnny Football from Bite Size Vikes. Let's go, let's go. Hey, tell tell everybody where we can find you, man. Hey, yeah, I'm on YouTube uh, at the Viker Podcast uh, and on X at Viker Podcast. And I'm on TikTok, too, and that's Viker Podcast as well. Yep, uh, I think I'm on those two. I, I, I seem to forget when I was doing my intro, but hey, Travis, man, uh, before we talk about pro days and, and quarterbacks for the 785th time, <laughs> uh, except for Caleb Williams, because we don't talk about yeah. Caleb Williams, apparently, because we're not getting him. But no. we're, we're going to say that for a bit later. Tell me about your general sense about what you think the offseason has been like for us. I think it's been pretty good. Um, I don't really have any complaints. I think, uh, obviously, the Greenert signing, the Cashman, uh, Van Ginkle, those were big explosive signings. I think they kind of bolstered the defense, uh, kind of replaced the the Hunter and, and DJ Wanham days. I think they did pretty good in that part. Um the, you know, the Shaq Griffin and, you know, the couple other, the, the one, the two year deals, the, the, the cat friendly contracts they've seen to sign. Uh, quasi has been cooking, man. I've been impressed. I've been uh, setting higher expectations than most because you're not putting, you're not putting on dead cap years on contracts unless you're trying to fit more pieces into a, a year and try to win now, in my opinion. Right. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's it's I'm I'm the exact same way on that. I think I think they're doing everything pretty smart and they're 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 spreading everything out like they should. And you know, I've been kind of you know I've been a little impatient. I'll be honest with Quasi because the two drafts he's had so far. And but to be honest, I mean, you know, with Kirk's contract in the past, they haven't been able to you know really get going in free agency. So this was really their first opportunity, and I think they they hit the ground running. Well, I and to be fair, I mean. We just never had cap room until this year, and we got a twenty-eight yeah. million dollar cap right on Kirk Cousins this year, and we're getting free agents. So yeah, yeah, uh, we're doing it this year. We did it. La- he had a twenty million dollar cap hit last year, yeah. so it's it's been dragging on older contracts and void years from previous guys and stuff. So he he was brought in to clean up a mess, a, a little bit of a mess of what Spielman left us. And we haven't had cap room uh, like we're going to have next year or for this this year. I think this is the first year since – well, it's definitely the first year since I've been doing YouTube that we didn't start the offseason with, without a negative number. Yeah. So th- this is the first year with a negative – with a positive number, and we had $58 million in dead cap. Yeah. So, I mean, so this year is the f- first couple of years. And honestly, I've been – I wished we had one more year of Kirk. And that way, next year, uh, we'd had all that cap room, starting with a rookie, filling in those gaps for him. He's got to sit under and got mentored. That was my hope. But we that ship yeah. sailed two years ago when yeah. he only extended him for one year instead of two. And yeah. now he's been year to year. So we've moved on from Kirk. Uh, I rarely talk about him on my channel anymore. Same. But <laughs> one, thing, one thing that is for sure is we're in a better place financially. Um, yeah. we, I just talked about how I feel like we're still going to win this year, 
or try to win this year because, you know, you don't go into your – you didn't get the job saying, hey, we're going to win six or seven games in my year three of my big plan. And that, yeah. and we're looking at a four out of five year losing season for Justin Jefferson, and we're trying to extend him. How do you feel yeah. like that's going for Justin Jefferson? Uh, I guess it depends on what you read and where you read it, right? Um, I, honestly, I think it's it's I think it's going to get done. It's probably not going to get done anytime soon. Um, not before the draft, I wouldn't think. Um, I've talked about it before on my channel. I, I, they kind of have to get it done before camp because I mean you. I would think he's probably not going to show up if they don't get it done before camp, but I'm confident it's going to get done. It sounds like he's kind of in the loop on the, on the plan for the future, at least the quarterback plan. So uh, it sounds like he's, he's committed. He's there. I I feel like, um, I feel like we probably would have been, he'd probably be signed faster if we had our, uh, the predecessor of our quarterback. Yeah. But I still thought it would he, with that, he probably would have waited for a couple of receivers to sign, and then he would have signed. But now yeah. I feel like he wants to see who's going to be throwing to him, and he wants to probably catch a few balls for him from him yeah. in the OTAs if he doesn't not unless he doesn't show for those, and then uh, sign right before camp. Do you feel like that's kind of like the timeline is like right before camp? Yeah, I think uh, we should see something right before OTAs. I think. Oh, you're that, saying before OTAs? You think I think so. I think yeah, because I think obviously, I mean, yeah, obviously, even gonna, catch a ball from the rookie yet. Yeah, I know. I I think um, <laughs> I think he'll um, obviously we're gonna draft a quarterback, right? And I think um, I mean he 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 knows the plan. Um, he knows the plan better than we do. <laughs> uh, but yeah. he knows what's going on, and and uh, he's plugged in. I think I think once we we draft our guy, whoever that is, um. Yeah, he'll, he's committed. He's there. You know, he'll he'll sign. I think I think it'll be before OTAs, but it it could be right before camp. Well, I think um, the fact that Kirk had left now, and now that we have, you know, we're looking at a rookie or Sam Darnold. I think we put leverage back into his court. You know, yeah. what I'm saying like, yeah. hey, I mean, Vegas got us winning six and a half games, mm -hmm. and you're gonna have to pay me. Like maybe some extra, maybe put a an extra an extra digit, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. at the end of that. Yeah. But uh, I'm kind of feeling like he's got a little bit more leverage because you just lost Daniel Hunter, you lost, you know, Kirk Cousins. Um, maybe maybe you were like that. You're okay with that plan? Uh, you did, and we talked. You talked about it, and we'll, I'm going to shift to that. Was that we brought in a greener? We brought in a Van Ginkle and uh, Shaq Griffin. Um, we kind of replaced. Um, Daniil's production with Greenery is similar type of you know he he could be a down guy or you know it just he's an edge just like just like uh, Daniil Hunter is I, mm -hmm. I feel Daniil Hunter this is slightly a downgrade but I think he fits this defense just fine the guy that fits the defense perfectly is Van Ginkle in my yeah. opinion yeah and I think uh, Shaq's gonna be a, a sneaky good affordable spot on this defense how do, how do you feel like um how do you feel about Shaq yeah you just hit on it it's gonna be a he's gonna have a veteran presence a veteran voice um you know I, not probably as similar as when Patrick Peterson was there but you know it, you know having that veteran voice in the locker room I, I think it's gonna allow Byron Murphy to kind of play maybe the middle he's not gonna be out there on the island on his own having to do everything and um maybe he can kind of you know coach up some of these uh you know you know andrew booth and, and those guys you know he can you know coach these uh these younger corners up you know caleb evans um because you know they, we need we need them to do good we need them to, to uh to develop and they just haven't done so yet now everybody out there a few shout outs right now we got tristan what's in the what's up man we got dave thibodeau in the house uh i interrupted listening to back on the chain gang i saw you were live to a, so, <laughs> all right man Appreciate it. Uh, I hope here we go. I hope Brian Murphy the second is playing in the middle of our D line this year. Well, so Tristan's a big. Uh, let's get uh, Murphy with the 11th pick and, and yeah. get Penix with the 23. I'm not going to talk about that yet, Tristan. You're going to have to hang on. You're going to have to hang on. But uh, I think uh, Shaq is a is a, one of those guys. He's an effort guy. I think he's got and one of the things that the coaches I think recently even talked about was body control. And he's yeah. got it in spades where he, he made some crazy good plays and almost plays that you just 
he just had great body controls. And he's a veteran. He's been around. He's 28 years old. Greenard's, you know, Greenard and uh, Van Ginkle aren't super young. I think 28 and 30 or, or 20, 28 years old, I think, both of them maybe. So yeah. we brought in some veterans with experience. My Miami Dolphin friends just love um, Van Ginkle. Like he's the, he's the Swiss Army knife. And gets after it, high effort dude. So I feel like we've made. I think once we lost the players, we did. Quasi pivoted very well. I don't think we're in Plan A. I don't. No one can. No. This is not Plan A. But he pivoted well, and I and I like it. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't agree more. And A, I'm, I'm told if it's Plan A, Sam Darnold. How much faith do you have in him? Um, maybe start in the first few games or the whole season. Yeah. I, well, you know, I, I think it's been said before. He wasn't put in the greatest uh, situation when he was drafted by the Jets. And then he, you know, he, he went to Carolina and that was just, I mean, Carolina's a dumpster fire. And um, he, he kind of saw some glimpses uh, when he came in um, in relief of Brock Purdy a couple of times this year, you know, he was around a, an offensive juggernaut with San Francisco and, you think, you know, if you look at San Francisco, we kind of mirrored them as far as the offensive weapons we have. And um, I think he I think he'd be fine. I mean, he's going to he's going to make some mistakes. I mean, he, he's Sam Donald. We've, we've seen him play um, regardless of what team he's at. Um, he he's Sam Donald. Uh, but I think um, I think he's going to be a better option than Nick Mullins. Now, I think I think Kevin O'Connell had seen enough of the Nick Mullins show. And um, he's a little bit younger. He's you know, he and he. You know what? If if whoever we draft, or maybe we don't draft, maybe we don't move up, which you know would suck, and uh, we don't get our guy, maybe he has that Sam Darnold. That is, maybe he has that Baker Mayfield type of season, and you know who knows. Yeah, w- one of the things I've always uh, I've talked about, and I knew I I kind of remembered. I'm like, God, Teddy Bridgewater had a pretty decent year with Carolina one year. Let me look. Oh, 2020. He had uh he had career year in yards. He had a career year in like um completion percentage. He, and I'm like, hold it, do they have the same coach? Yes, they had the same coach. And then the next year, it absolute like five points lower completion percentage, 26 yards passing compared to Teddy's 3,700. I mean, yeah. it, it, they had the same coach and yeah. uh, like seven and seven and a half yards per attempt for Teddy and six and a half for for uh, Sam Darnold, so I'm like, hold it. They both had DJ Moore. Uh, D- yeah. Oh, hold it. DJ, is it DJ Moore plays for the yeah. Bears now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. they both mm-hmm. had DJ Moore. And the production on the receivers went down from one year to the next. I'm like, oh, what? what's going on here? What's going on? I just, yeah. I'm, I'm just thinking maybe we've already seen it. But, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Oh, he's, he hasn't had this talent around him. He is now more experienced. He's only, he's only 26. He's been in the league six years. So same age like, as Darren Hall. <laughs> yeah, same age as Darren Hall, which is absolutely crazy. Like, yeah. uh, well, that's what you go you go on a sabbatical. But hey, Jonathan yeah. says we're gonna win eleven games next year and take the division. I like it. Yes, we'll take that. We'll take that. <laughs> yeah. But what what does Travis think, man? What does Travis think? How many games are we winning right oh. now? Right, right now? now, with the way the team is right now. Uh, I say eight or nine games. Eight or nine. And Eight I said there's no reason we can't win 10, um, yeah. you know, as much as 10. And you, we could surprise. You know, I said 12 yeah. games of the year we won 13. So, yeah, I give us one extra if, if we win that. But somebody could have somebody in the division, whereas Detroit or, or Green Bay could have a season like we did last year and just go through all those injuries. And, you know, you hate to see it happen to any player, but it could happen, you know, and, and look how strong we were with the rotating door at quarterback last season. We were we were knocking on the playoff door and you know we someone could have a season like we did and we could luck out. Hey Randy, thanks for correcting me. Yeah, 28 was Van Nickel, 26 was I uh, was uh Greener, so I appreciate that. Um and I think uh Shaq is 28 and he's been in the league like six years too. So uh good good fits. Now let's I guess let's let's go ahead. Let's talk about quarterbacks. Yeah. Um, what was the question earlier? What was it about? It was, uh, uh, I can't remember, but Hey, we had some pro days. Um, yeah. is there anybody that stood out to you in, in the pro days? Uh, I think all three. Well, so excluding Caleb Williams, the three I'm going to mention would be, uh, we don't talk about Caleb Williams cause we're not yeah. getting them. 
We're not getting them, yeah. Uh, Drake May, um, uh, Jaden Daniels, uh, McCarthy, I, Penix as well. Uh, Penix really surprised me. Um, I mean, well, I say surprised. We all know he can throw the ball. We all know he's just got a really good touch, and and um, he's got a really good air raid to him. Um, I didn't know that the 4 4 he ran. Some scouts say it was a 4 5 3, but the 40 the yard dash he run, I, you know, I know he was quick. We just didn't really get a chance to see that in games, and I don't think he really will, even in the NFL. He didn't really, he's not a really take off kind of guy. Um, but yeah, I was surprised by the speed. Um, obviously, the accuracy has always been there. Um, he impressed, I think. Obviously, I think his draft stock kind of rose a little bit. You know, he's kind of a second round maybe maybe late first round and and now we're possibly thinking he could be top 15 so he surprised me a little bit drake may um quarterback to still i think um i mean he had a few errors in, in the beginning but once he settled in he, he looked fine uh jaden daniels same as you know for, for jaden daniels uh i think he had five incompletions but he settled in he um and yeah, he was he was smooth i mean the the throw is the, when he throws it just seemed just just effortless you know it just he just it's it's like it's nothing to him it's it's really amazing to see but um no big surprises other than than you know Penix uh, with the speed I, I didn't i just didn't have a chance to see that in when he played college ball this year now just so just so you guys know you're you're seeing Travis from biker podcast and um on the bottom scroll, we got his Twitter, we got his YouTube channel. Make sure you go over there and subscribe. Now, I feel a little vindicated because on Wednesday, I said, I, I said Michael Penix Jr. is going to surprise people where he gets drafted um, yeah. because I, I think I, I think he's going to go higher than more people think. And then the next day, he runs a he runs that four or five. Uh, and the 37 inch vertical man, I'm yeah. like, that's ex that's explosiveness, you know. Hey, if you well, have a yeah. vertical or you have that broad jump, that's yeah. explosiveness. I would have liked to see, I don't know what his three cone drill is, but if that's sub seven, I feel like he probably it probably is because when I see him in the pocket, I don't know where anybody got the whole statue idea from because he moves well in the pocket, he um, does, yeah, he, and he just doesn't take off and run like a like a Jaden Daniels or even Bo Nix or, or, uh, you know, I, th I think, uh, freaking JJ McCarthy's a cheat code and a scrambling ability. I think he's yeah. really good at it. Yeah. Um, and in all it seems for me, I just feel an even more comfortable with this draft of getting every, I think Drake may probably is the least mobility now out of yeah. the top six guys. Yeah. And he's, he's, and he's not bad. No, so, I'm feeling very comfortable about the athletes in this draft. Where, who out of the top six wouldn't you want at all? Uh, Is there a guy? I hate because uh, he gets so much hate, and I I hate to just keep using him because he, you know, he, he seems like a good he dude. For Oregon? But he does, Bo Nix. Yeah, <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean, you just kind of look at um. Yeah, you the the bowl game when they played Liberty, right? I mean, obviously they were going to win the game. Liberty didn't have a chance, but it seemed like Liberty's defense, especially their secondary, was giving them a fit. Once they got the ball out of Nix's hands to put the ball on the ground, uh, you know, they took complete control of that game and never looked back. But you know, it he he struggled against he struggled against LU at first. So, and you know, there's a reason why he transferred from Auburn. He was a starter in Auburn, and he left. And I mean, you know, he left because the new coaching staff was coming in. And he wasn't going to play. Um, you know, there's, there's a reason why he's kind of, you know, been around so long. He, he's he's also, what, 20, 25, 26 years old as well? 24. He just turned 24. 24. Just turned 24. So played, um, people say he played for six years. He only played for five. He, yeah, 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 technically, yeah. <laughs> Penix um, played for six. Pe yeah, Penix. <laughs> yeah, Penix. And apparently Jaron Hall. <laughs> I had no idea Jaron Hall was 20, 26 years well, old. Well, he but, took two years yeah. Mormon, so he took two years. Yeah, Mormon. yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't know. So I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm okay with Bo Nix as a, as yeah. a, I think he's going to be a successful football player. I, I feel like all six are pretty good, but you know, it's, it's proven that like 40% of first round picks may, you know, make it. And only 55% yeah. of top 10 court picked in the top 10 make you know, make something of themselves. So yeah. somebody's going to fail. Um, 
outside of Bonex, is there who's the weakest link or, or the guy you're most worried about out of those other top five that might not make it? And then um, and healthy, staying healthy. I mean, obviously, yeah. if you're gonna say Penix is knee, but out yeah. of the top five, they all stayed healthy. One major injuries. Who do you think's gonna? Who do you think's gonna fail, or the most likely to fail? The the one we don't one mention, we Kayla Williams. <laughs> you think you think Kayla Williams has the the most bust potential? I think so, and it's not because of his talent. It's just it's it's everything upstairs. It's everything, um, you know, everything that he can control. Um, I just think personality wise, uh, it's you see too much of it. I mean, you, you see it every year. There's, there's always one player, whether it's, no matter what position, they're just a little bit too into themselves, and it never works out. Yeah, I mean, as far as uh, I've I've said this before, is my biggest worry about him is that he might find he's got other interests. Let's say that might take him away from football. Yeah, and that that would be my worry is that he's got that. And he, and you said something that stood out right was that um, the things he can control. Yeah, like everything his his media presence see in public. Um, talking in interviews or or press conferences, you know, I'm gonna just go play video games and cuddle with my dog after a loss. You know, it's just that yeah. you know it doesn't scream alpha dog no. leading CEO of the company no, uh, or the or the NFL franchise to me. So the you know the talents there. Um, I think other people might point out, and I've seen people like analysts point out, is like. You know, not big names that ESPN hires, but those guys are. You know, I don't know necessarily trust them either. Yeah. But, but uh, all his big plays came on him playing hero ball, scrambling around, but nothing yeah. from the pocket, right? Or not as much from the pocket. So, is he a guy that can stand in that pocket and deliver the ball? Do you see that in him? I think if he stands in the pocket, yeah, I, I think I think he could. I think he can develop into that, but. Uh, he's he's gonna have to. Um, yeah. I think you know. It, obviously, NFL. we all yeah. NFL is a, is a different monster. It's a different animal. Um, and yeah, you touched on it. I mean, everything that he did. Um, if you you look at the film, you, it's all out there. I mean, he's got receivers open across the middle. He's got he's got all these options. He's got a, he's got a huge pocket. The offensive line is doing their job, and he's just scrambling around, just just running around, and uh, you know, <laughs> you know, you just kind of like what is what is he doing? He's just you know and. And you can't do that in the league, you know. So and you're going to have offensive linemen are going to look at you in the huddle like, why are you running around making me look like I'm not blocking? You know, you're going to have receivers that are, you know, wanting to make money. And they're like, Dude, why are you looking like I'm not open? You know, so um, it, it kind of reminds me, and, and I and I hate to compare him to this guy, but it, it kind of reminds me of Johnny Manziel. Now, one of the things that guys that stands out when it comes to, you know, pressure is Penix. And he, he yeah. um, a young cream gamer, gamer, shout out to you, man. Um, there's a lot of, there's a, some Penix fans out here. I'm not going to lie. Oh, yeah. There's some, yeah. there's a lot of Penix fans. I love them too. They're, they're like, every once in a while, I see them pop up and throw in, I don't care. We'll just take him at 23. I don't know if yeah. he's going to get there. Yeah. My, my thought is he doesn't get past Seattle. Um, and Ooh, I, yeah. I've seen two, I've seen a couple of, uh, mock drafts by big name guys in the media that have connections and they're like, yeah, he's, um, and they mocked him to Seattle. Yeah. I, I have a tough problem with him getting past Denver, or the Raiders. Yeah. But yeah. One of the things is, is that now that I've seen how fast he is and how explosive, you know, is, you know, is how athletic he is, um, which was the fear from a lot of people. And someone brought up the bionic knee. I, I said that to my boys at GG Sports Podcast. Like, he's got a bionic knee. Just take him at 11. Yeah. Um, so I don't necessarily want to take him at 11. But I that's one of the things. He stands He stands in the pocket. He takes a hit. He's, uh, he's you know, he he handles the pressure. Bo Nix actually is up there, too. But there's a lot of quick passes going on in the Oregon offense. So I don't really yeah. trust that as much. But for me, I'm not going to lie. Um, and I've thought this, I've never said it out loud because I didn't want the criticism. I'm, I'm, I, I just didn't want it. I didn't want the criticism, but I thought he was the, I was, I thought he was the guy that can go into the NFL and start day one and be successful. 
because he has the experience. He has two big years of production. Um, he's a he's a NFL quarterback. He's yeah. a thrower. He reminds me of a left-handed Warren Moon. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion, I said that the other day. But he's a guy I think can actually like if he came to the Vikings. I'm not worried about Sam Darnold playing. What do you yeah. think about that? Yeah, I agree. I, obviously, the medical stuff, but I mean, they say everything checks out. So, um, I, yeah, I would I would be fine with Penix. I like Penix. Uh, I'm not I'm not totally against them sitting back and I mean if, now if they have a guy that they really have have picked on their whiteboard and they go get them yeah. go do it but if they sit back I know everyone else is going to be kind of down if they don't trade those picks up but if they sit back and take them uh, I know maybe not 23 like you mentioned but if they take defense at 11 then take oh. that 23 and package it with something else and slide up and go get them right after that 11 I can see it and I wouldn't be against it Yeah I mean as far as who we're going up to get, I I feel like the top three are taking quarterbacks. I think our only yeah. chance is, and honestly, I think Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to the Cardinals. Yeah, so I I feel like we're gonna have to trade with uh, the Chargers to get in, you know, to beat out potentially the Giants, the Raiders, and Denver, and who knows Seattle. But I I doubt Seattle. But those three teams, we got we got more ammo obviously than Denver or the Raiders. But you don't mm-hmm. have to give up too much to go up one spot to five. Yeah. And maybe that maybe the Chargers don't want to drop too far because they got a guy in mind. Yeah. Um, but they want the extra pick. So yeah. Gosh. Um honestly, New York is the only team that scares me. And yeah. They've, they did. And yeah. they've uh, brought in JJ McCarthy just like us. They're mm-hmm. looking at quarterbacks just like us. And they may be doing it as a smoke screen to make sure a team like us goes and trades up with them. So their guy falls even, you know, falls to them. Like, you know, who knows? Maybe, may, maybe freaking Marvin Harrison Jr. Maybe, you know, maybe the other uh, good receivers. Mm-hmm. But uh, that could be a smoke screen. But who, who, who are we coveting? Do you have a, a sense of who do we cover? Uh, I think it's, I think it's either Drake May or, or JJ McCarthy. I think it's either those two. Um, I think obviously if you want to get May, you're gonna have to get in the top three. Um, McCarthy, you're probably, like you mentioned, you're gonna have to probably trade with, with, uh, LA and, and get to five. Cause you know, you don't know what, you don't know what the giants are going to do, but yeah, I think it's those two. Uh, shout out to a guy I don't think I've seen before. K- Kufu 21, take panics, call it. The resurrection of air chargers. <laughs> All right. I love I'll it. Take it. But uh, hey, if you guys are in the chat right now, make sure you hit like. That what pushes these videos, gets it out to people. Um, we get a lot, a lot of views after the show's done. It's It's been wonderful. And the reason why is because you are hitting like and you're sharing the video, and I appreciate it. And if you... Uh, and uh, I don't see anybody from Twitter or Facebook, but uh, I post it there too. Make sure you follow Viker Podcast on in in the scroll below, and Viker and the Viker Podcast on YouTube. Uh, so make sure you follow him. But gosh, um, you you picked us to win eight or nine games. That's that's fine. All right. Uh, does that put Quasi in the hot seat? You'll be in your you'll be going into year four of his contract. With yeah. no extension. Right. Well, I think if you uh I think if they go get their guy, whether he plays or not, whether he sits behind Donald, I think when you get your quarterback of the future, uh Quasi and Kevin O'Connell kind of just reset their tenure there. I think I think you get an automatic two to three more years extended right after that because you know, I mean you haven't you, you haven't seen it pan out, right? You gotta you gotta see it pan out. And I think the Wilfs are are patient. I think sometimes they're too patient, but I think in a situation like this, it, it's, it'd be good for them to be patient. So let me, let me, uh, let me think about that for a second. So you're saying we have eight, we don't make the playoffs this year, eight or nine wins. You think he gets an extension after that, but going before year four happens? Yeah, I think if if they don't if they don't put in whoever the quarterback of the future is, whether you know even if Darnold plays bad and they put him in a little bit towards the end of the season. Um, he's still the quarterback. He's the one they picked. I think him and Kevin O'Connell uh, deserve to to develop him. I think you know 
Kwesi will, will – I think they'll be fine. I, I Honestly, I don't think he'll be on the hot seat. Playoffs or not, if you go get your guy and you have a, a decent season, a promising season, uh, you know, you look at upside. I think the Wolves are glass half full kind of guys. And, you know, and I think in a situation like that, you got to be. You got to be a little patient. Uh, I don't think he's on the hot seat. Now, if they go out there and they just completely – or they're just crap, Donald just – Donald, you know, poops a bit, and 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 the the guy they take is 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 not developed. He's not ready. Um, yeah, yeah. You you could you probably see uh you probably see Quasi looking for a job. Um, but I think eight or nine wins, maybe knocking on the door of the playoffs. I think he's safe. I think playoffs definitely. I think extension. I think anything like anything below that. Um, you know, you can make a playoffs with nine wins. You know, you can make it with eight. Yeah. You but could, yeah. um, I think below that, I think it there's a good chance that they wait out year four to see what he does with that um, cap space and what the season entails, which yeah. sucks because um, it's not it's pros aren't like college where you're your last year of a, a contract and you're like, uh, yeah, are you going to be here next year? I don't think the pros are like that. Um, yeah. I think with 100, what, over a hundred million dollars in cap space. I would be I, as an owner. I'd be like, let me see what he does with that. Let me see year two of this rookie before I yeah. commit. Because if you fire a guy, you're eating that. Enti- These guys are also smart dudes, and you know, yeah. and good with money. You're gonna put in a bunch of money into your coach, you know, your coach and your and your GM, and you fire them after two years of a four year, uh, you know, of a four year extension or or one year after a three year, ex- whatever. Yeah, mm-hmm. These guys are also smart too, but you you're right. They are sometimes way too patient. Um, and I think of uh, the Vikings in general have been patient. Uh, they like to p- play veterans in the past over, and even KOC for that matter, veterans over rookies and digs, not dressing. And, and, and then we've re- Justin Jefferson, not starting uh, Jordan Addison, not starting. The only guy that gets a start is that Ingram, but yeah, uh, yeah, no. Which leads into this offensive line. I uh, where where do you feel we? And it looks like Brandle's probably got the inside track at left guard. Where do yeah? Have you, do you feel like our offensive line has turned the corner? I think it has. I think you know you brought up Ingram. I think you know yeah. The first year it was it was it was pretty bad. Um, I think he settled in over the last couple of seasons. Um, I, th- I think Ingram has kind of developed. He's kind of coming to his own. Um, I, I, I can trust him there. I'm fine with him. Uh, Brando, we seen him a little bit come in um, a little bit last year. Um, I don't have much on him, um, but they obviously think they think a lot of him. They gave him – I mean, I don't think they gave him the bag, but they gave him, you know, decent starting guard pay. So um, the the thing that really I have to question, and you probably have yourself, is is the Dalton Reisner situation. Um and you might have, you might have been you you know you're probably going to get into that next. Or I'm not sure, so I don't want to steal your thunder if well, you were, now. but yeah, <laughs> um, it, it, that one kind of that one kind of boggles me. Um, it seemed like you know every time you watch him, he was just looking for somebody to block. Um, but if you think about um, you know when he when he when Denver didn't resign him, he just kind of sat at home for for five or six weeks, however long it was, and nobody called, nobody nobody picked up the phone and, until we did, and. <clears throat> And now no one is signing. He's on Twitter begging for a job, and, and that one seems that one that one blows my mind a little bit. But um, I'd like to have him back uh, if it would, you know, obviously if it's a if it's a cat friendly deal. Uh, I think he wants to get paid. That might be the hang up. But um, I think, I think Brandon's uh, agent. And oh yeah, yeah, he did. House. Yeah, yep, he sure did. Yeah. So my my th- one of the things that I thought he was gone was uh, Quasi in a press conference is said that I tell these guys that I will negotiate I'm negotiating private not in the press and then Reisner talked about being open to you know, on Twitter announcing that come get me and I'm like well that must have mean Quasi isn't even talking to him yeah um, so that's my thought there is that Quasi wasn't even talking to him and as far as Right. I also thought once Kirk left and Daniil left and he pivoted, he's also now thinking about compensation picks. He, uh, if he go rise or go sign somewhere else, that helps us get the, the comp yeah. picks for the next year. And yeah. I'm thinking that's why 
you know, he didn't he didn't even really get try to get Daniel back. Didn't really try to get KJ Osborne back. And something you know, and Jordan Hicks only went for four million. It's like letting these guys go is going to help us with the comp picks for the free agents that we brought back. Yep. Um, I th- I just feel it's that way. It's kind of like the Patriot way when they that's how they did it. Mm-hmm. So I that's where I feel like with Reisner is that he's just a a casualty of a plan. That's a good point. It could be what it is. Yeah. Um. Now the biggest hole. The biggest hole we had the past couple years is interior D line, man. Yeah, and uh, I don't feel like we addressed it. Uh yeah. The the was it the Tillery signing? Um, because he hasn't really lived up to his his uh his draft potential. We like draft. We like bringing former first round picks on our team. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I, I think. Um. I think Harrison Phillips needs some help. I mean, he he's being asked to do too much. Um, I think if you go and find, uh, whether it's in the draft or, I mean, they obviously didn't do it in free agency, but I, I think if you address that, t- that position in the draft, you'll you'll be able to help out Harrison Phillips. Like I said, he's just being asked to do too much. And uh, once you kind of, you know, relax his responsibility a little bit, you'll see the dog kind of come out of Harrison Phillips. You know, he'll be able to play his role just fine. Um, I, you know, we got the first two round, the first or the two, uh, I can't even talk, the two first round picks. You know, it, you think about if we don't move up, like I mentioned before, um, and we just stick and pick, um, yeah, that 11th pick should be used for a guy like Byron Murphy or, you know, or uh, Devon J. Sweat or someone, you know, go get a, you know, I like to say meat and potatoes, go get that dog and just, and and plug them in there and then, and then focus on everything else later on in the draft. But yeah, we do need to address that position. It's a big hole. And I don't think the Tillery sign, I think that's more of a death signing. Uh, if anything, he might not even make it out of camp. Yeah, I mean, I felt like we were throwing bodies at D tackle, and hopefully, yeah. no. One guy I really liked, uh, some guys that stepped up, and you can kind of pick a guy. And I'm, I'm like, uh, Jaquelin Roy. I thought, yeah, will turn the corner this year because he has, he had splash plays, and I, th- I think he, he's going to be earning a lot more time. And even ESPN has him starting on their uh, depth chart, which I think is fair considering they really didn't bring anybody else to take his job. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and he is flexible. He can play uh, nose tackle on third downs and that's what he did that. Um, and he could play D end. And that's one of the things when they, we drafted him and they said, Oh, you can play all, all over the line. I'm um, like, damn it. He's not a nose tackle then because, yeah. you know, cause come on. I want a I want a nose tackle, and you give me a guy that you can play all over the line. But honestly, he didn't he didn't impress me being where we drafted him. I think was it the fourth or fourth round or third round? I, I think it was. I I want to say he was fourth round, but fourth, he, I, I think it was, no Ward yeah. was fourth round. Um, and so we but we did draft two guys in the fourth round. But anyways, um, he was this day two pick. Mm-hmm. Um. I remember when we got him, and I was like, "Yeah, this is a pretty decent pick." And it actually impressed me. Um, I was, I wasn't sure he'd be good. Now I feel like he is going to be a very viable player in the NFL, and I feel really good about that. Which is, uh, you know, a good thing to say because that first draft wasn't so good so far. Hopefully, some of those guys step up. But who do you think out? You know, I'm saying Jaqueline and Roy. Anybody that you have in mind that you think will be a, a, a guy that'll step up this year? Uh, just all over the board. Yeah, go ahead. Hope Blake Brandle Blake steps up. <laughs> Brandle? Yeah. yeah, I hope, I hope Brandle steps up. I, yeah. So, hey, in spring, in preseason games, I was telling, I was wanting Brandle to take over for Ed Ingram because in preseason, he he was, st- honestly, he was looking good. He was he, and they put him on the left and right side, but I thought on the right side he actually did better. Um, that would be Ed Ingram. Um, you know, any pass blocks. And one of the things I uh, saw in in um, um, who were we just talking about? Uh, the left guard. Shit. Um, uh, Brando. No, before. Oh, Ingram. In- Reisner. No, Reisner. So yeah. <laughs> Reisner. Sorry, Reisner had independent hands. Like mm-hmm. he would. He, he would do that one, get chopped. He'd bring the other one up, and then he'd bring them both back again. And Brandle has that. Yeah, he can pass block. You know, that's something in Ingram. He's like, you know, let's hit the guy, you know, mm-hmm. and 
sure, I think he's a little bit more of a mauler in the run game and stuff like that. And Reisner and um, Brandle not, not, aren't necessarily that way. Brandle's 6'8", for heaven's yeah. sake. He was a tackle. Yeah. Um, so that's really unusual to have a, your ba- tallest guy <laughs> sitting there at left guard. But, you know, I, I, I think, you know, is there anybody else that you think you're, you think, not hope, Hope is not a plan, according to Quasey. Uh, who do you think is going to uh, step up this year? Uh, I think Byron Murphy, and I, I know he, I, I, you know, he was he was also someone's kind of asked to do a little bit more um, than what he could handle last year. I think getting Shaq Griffin in, and I know I mentioned this before, but I think getting Griffin in is going to allow Murphy to be a little more free. He can probably play the middle a little bit more now. He's not on the island by himself, and I think I, I would love to see him see him improve and and i think he will he you know he wasn't that bad i mean he uh you know he um as far as you know yeah he got he got beat a little bit but you can't you can't underestimate good tackling and and that's what he's got i mean he may get beat on the pass but you know there was there was very little yards after catch with murphy now one of the things um you know you make a great point there he wasn't as uh we brought him in thinking he'd play a little nickel too and yeah we went safety and d- did we go did we go big safety because we just didn't have the corners? You know what I'm saying? So was it that or was it, hey, we just preferred to go three safeties? Um, what, what do you think there? I, I think you just hit it on the head right there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, one guy I think uh, I think they thought they thought would step up in year two was Andre Carter II. Yeah. Um, after Because they played him more than I expected. And I didn't even think he'd see the field. And yeah. he started getting a lot of playing time. And I'm thinking, give this guy, you know, a NFL offseason and build up that body that this guy, this is this guy might turn into something. Um, how do you feel about him? Yeah, I think uh we yeah, like you said, we got to see him a little bit last year. Um, more than more than I expected as well. And I think it's just, you know, with the injuries and 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 the depth that they had, you know, he just kind of had to play, but I think he did okay. I think I was impressed by him. And like you said, you know, he gets that off season to kind of develop and kind of come into his own. Um, I think he may have a good season this year. Now, a good point by Randy here is uh, Flores finds a way to get more out of his guys. Um, and I do, I do uh, feel like even though we lost one of our best Vikings ever in Daniel Hunter, um, that we may have improved our defense because of the, the I think we got more fits coming in. Yeah. Um, as far you know, as the guy like Cashman, I think he's a better fit than Jordan Hicks. I think Van Ginkle is the perfect, and I think Greenard was a, a nice replacement. Um, I I I think uh, with more depth, I feel a lot better. I'm better at D tackle, but. Do you think we can uh, be more consistent this year? Because the beginning and the end of last year wasn't the greatest. Yeah, they they really book in the season, especially on defense. You know, I know that the at the beginning of the season, the defense was kind of coming to their own. They had to kind of find their way. And Flores, you know, he was just kind of just throwing whatever he could in a melting pot and and, and hoping he can make something good out of it. Uh, and then, like you said, the end of the season, it really just injuries was the fault of that. But at the end of the season, they really didn't book in it very well on defense. I think overall, uh, another full season under Flores, um, another another off season, another camp that he can develop. He's got more tools in the tool bag this year. Now, I think I think they're going to be all right. I think they're going to be a top. I think top ten defense. That'd be awesome. It would and be. they were for like eight or nine games. Yeah, they were. Year. Yep. Right? Yep. They, in fact, they were one of the best for a little bit there. Yeah. Now I feel, um, I feel like if we improve that D line and God for the quarterback, that, um, that's just going to help our corners and safeties. I actually feel okay with the corners we have, and I feel great about the safeties we have. And now I feel like linebackers a strength, um, with a, with a cashman. And, uh, I feel like, that that helps out. Maybe we could add a guy. I don't know who knows from the draft or, or mm-hmm. whatever. But uh, yeah, the D D line is is in, uh, definitely the thing that'll help you know get after the quarterback. Now a sneaky shallow position because uh, you know our our uh, receiver do is just as good as anybody's. But after that, 
who do you think who do you think that wide receiver three is going to be or who, do you think we'll get production out of all all the rest of them or who's stepping up on on that uh in that list well, I think Powell uh, uh, solidified the uh, wide receiver uh, the wide receiver three spot last season, um, and, and you know they're bringing him back this year. Obviously, Kevin O'Connell loves him, thinks a lot of him. Uh, whenever he was asked to step up, you think about jo- uh, Justin Jefferson being down uh, those seven or eight weeks, and you know Powell went off. You know, and when at the time AJ Osborne just was struggling, couldn't catch the ball, couldn't get open. Um, some of the same things we've kind of seen over his tenure with with the Minnesota Vikings. I think Powell has, has moved into that wide receiver three spot easily. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he is too. Uh, you know, I just, you know what, I want one receiver over six foot tall. You know, I just yeah. want one, <laughs> right? It's not a yeah. tall receiver group, right? But yeah, um, Powell was clutch. Yeah, absolute clutch, and that's what you want to see. Um, I do want to. I do want someone in the draft, and you you mentioned a guy in off air uh, yeah. about who we could possibly go get, and who was that? Luke McCaffrey. You gotta you gotta go. Uh, you know you gotta go bloodline. I think right. Um, obviously, his brother, his dad. You know they've. You know there's no there's no explanation needed. Uh, now there is another name that I've that has, that has come up and and I would like to see possibly if they if they have a chance to get a receiver late. Uh, it's Brendan Rice out of USC. Uh, he's another kind of scrappy guy. Uh, but McCaffrey, man, like I mentioned before, the bloodline. I think you got to take him. Yeah, I'll have to go back and look at tape of him to see what his hands are like because I think that's important. Yeah, uh, we've had you know receivers that we've taken earlier, Troy Williams and. It were nicknamed Stone Hands, you know, Troy Williams. And <laughs> I, I was doing site support for U, uh, University of South Carolina. And I got to see every home game of his for his last two years of college. And when we drafted him, I was like, what the F did you guys just do? Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I was 20 years away from, or 23 years away from having my own podcast. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I just, you know, I, and then we've had, uh, you know, we've had other guys that just drop balls. And last year was a problem early on in the year. Uh, even K.J. Osborne was having problems. Even yeah. T.J. Hawkinson was having problems. Yeah. But speaking of uh, T.J. Hawkinson, we're going to have to play without him for, I think, for at least six weeks. I think you, that's what the IR is, is that you're going to be out six weeks. Who knows? Maybe it's four. I forget. But – uh you know, Johnny Munt, Josh Oliver, Nick Muse. Is that is that a tight end group that you're we're still okay and help that rookie out? Yeah, I think uh, I think they'll be fine. Johnny Mutt seems to be. I mean, he's kind of he's back and forth. I mean, he's hot and cold at times, but when when you know when asked to, he he can step up. Nick Muse is, is interesting to me. I've really only seen him mainly in preseason, but he's looked fine. He was the hero of preseason. Yeah, he was. Yeah, and uh, I think I think he can probably uh, Oliver now. Oliver, no, I, I don't. I don't have any expectation out of Oliver. I seen it. I seen what I need to see last season. Um, the the just wasn't very reliable. I know he had the touchdown pass uh, in the Denver game when when Dobbs just went you know Madden and was scrambling around and 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 cheat code like, but. Um, you know the the drops, the fumbles. They brought him in, Oliver. That is, they brought him in to, to for for run block, and the run game was terrible. Uh, but I think Johnny Munt. I think Nick Muse could be a guy we could probably see step in a lot more. Um, I'm a big fan. I think of Nick he Muse. improved from. I think he improved from one year to the next more than anybody. Yeah, or as good as anybody. Yeah. But he didn't get a he didn't get a play. Uh, he, he didn't, didn't play yeah. this last year. Yeah. And, I, and well, because that's how deep we were. were. And yeah. Johnny Munt, when TJ Hawkinson went down, I think he stepped up. I think Oliver, um, he was a receiving tight end in college. And he yeah. shows it. And he, he could show it at times. That one fumble cost us big time. Yeah. Uh, first play of the game. And yeah. losing that game. That Against the us. Chiefs. Against, Against the, the Chiefs, Chiefs, man. That yeah. was a, a game we could have won. That was yeah. a game we could have won. Yeah, uh, I just and, and that's disheartening. But uh, and then uh, he's had some mistakes. He's had some holding penalties, holding penalty on the uh, touchdown to JJ against Carolina. The next play is a pick six. Yep. I mean, 
you know, just there, he had some big mistakes, but I, overall, I, I still like the I still like the signing. I think it's a huge deal for us. Uh, I think in year two, he's just going to be more, com- you know, with the with this offense, he's just going to be more comfortable. I think they're all going to be more comfortable. Uh, it's year three for some, uh, the rest of them. Uh, and gosh, I think I think even w- even without T.J. Hawkinson, and now and let's let's talk about it. Um, even without T.J. Hawkinson, I think this is a good offense, and one of the reasons is because we brought in Aaron Jones. Do you think that yeah, instantly oh, yeah. makes our running game better? I think it does, um, and the reason why I think about is is the guy who's going to be behind them is Ty Chandler. I think Ty Chandler is going to be able to develop and learn behind a guy like Aaron Jones much more than you know who he had with Alexander Madison. Um, I think the run game is instantly improved. I think we're going to have more rushing touchdowns right off the bat. I believe um, you know Madison had zero, uh, but yeah, I think it's a I think it's a good signing. It, it was a it was a cat friendly deal, cheap. Um, one year deal, you know, if, if it doesn't pan out, we don't have to resign him. But I think I think it'll be good. And again, like I said before, I think about Ty Chandler with that with that signing because Ty Chandler, I think, is the future at that position for the for the Vikings. I've seen a lot out of uh, Ty Chandler last year. I'll see. Well, I've seen a lot more out of him because for whatever reason, Kevin O'Connell was just I don't know if Alexander Madison had some kind of dirt on Kevin O'Connell, but he just would not start Ty Chandler, and you know, until we were all just begging for it, but. I think Ty Chandler. Until somebody will, gets hurt, he doesn't. Play, he doesn't. Except yeah. for Ingram. Until someone gets hurt, yeah. he's not going to play the younger player over the older player. Yeah, and uh, he was forced to. And and I did see a couple of problems at the end. I I was uh, I forget who I uh, forget who it was, but I had a guest on who was constantly kind of ragging on uh, Ty Chandler about the way he passed block. I'm like, come on, man, you're nitpicking. And then yeah. I saw it at the end of the season, and he was. It was a problem. Uh, yeah. And I think uh, I think uh, coaches know that. And I think yeah. they, if it's a comfortability issue of not getting your your quarterback killed, um, that even if you can run the ball, that – but you know what? Adrian Peterson would block for shit. He was so yeah. bad at it. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, it sounds like you agree with me. He's probably yeah. one of the worst pass blockers in the league. And it's yeah. so crazy because he's so strong. But um, yeah, Ty Chandler, um, I was high from him from the beginning. Uh, you can go back and look at um, my videos on uh, the draft class from that year. And I was really high on Naylor. I was really high on Ty Chandler. I thought those were the two uh, very, you know, the two picks that were had the best value. Like they were under drafted, I thought. And Ty Chandler, very productive his last year. He had a split back situation in, in Tennessee, Carolina. Um, awesome. He runs a four, four. It's nuts. See how fast this kid is. So, but I think, I, I think the, a platoon is definitely, you know, get him 10, 12 hell at most 15 carries. But in this situation, I wouldn't mind him seeing eight to 10 because I like Aaron Jones that much. If he can stay healthy, um, out of, you know, I mean, do you see that as a platoon? Yeah, if he can stay healthy, I think he'll be fine. Um, I, I think um, one thing I think about that is the is the two times he's going to play Green Bay. You know he's pissed off. Uh, you know he's going to want to stick it to him. Um, that that first game Wait, we played. Game. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Don't take him out. <laughs> I, I mean, I was guess. I was I was a guy that was like saying he's a top five pick in fantasy a few years ago until he started missing games. Yeah. But I think he's 29 year, years old now. I think the contract was appropriate. Um, I, honestly, a little high. Uh, one, he's seven, you know, he's seven million for a 29 year old running back, one yeah. year contract. Yeah, I think that gave him a little extra because it was only one year. Yeah, prove it year. Maybe he gets a, you know, at this age he might just go one, uh, you know, for running backs. Now, um, Kate, um, Kevin O'Connell is famously saying that, it, yeah, the running back unfortunately is being undervalued and underpaid. Um, he realizes that, but he's not going to complain. I don't think. I don't think he's going to no, complain no. that he gets uh, an Aaron Jones. Um, I, I always thought he was one of the best running backs in the league, and now he's on our team, and we had, and outside of, uh, you know, Cook, uh, we just really haven't had that reliable every down running back at cook was like a big 
he was like a swing for the fences guy. Yeah. Aaron Jones, I think, and you know, you can get that consistency the whole game. And, you know, as long as he stays healthy. I think Aaron Jones, you can you can kind of mirror um parallel Jones and Cook. I think their their level of play is, is, is almost exactly the same. And uh one thing I will touch on too with Aaron Jones is gonna help out is the is the screen game. Because we did not have that with uh, Alexander Madison, and you want to go back to the Chiefs game. If Madison just catches that damn ball, we win the game. Um, if you know, Cook just, catches the damn ball against Buffalo, well, yeah. we don't we don't sneak <laughs> it in. We don't yeah we don't sneak it in. Then. Yeah, so we've had a problem with that. Yeah, I still think Kirk was in though. But yeah, if he would have caught that, oh, you did. Ball, ah, I think I, he was. I did. I, <laughs> well, I think the angle. I think the angle. It, well, that's true. It, it, yeah, it was kind of off. But I, I, I felt like he was in. But oh, we still won. We still won. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That well, was we our got Super Bowl. Another J Dash Forty Eight. You need a big running back to pass block in this league today, especially with the Eagles guy. So I thought. Um, that's my guy, Justin, right there. Oh, it, it, yeah. I appreciate it. Man? Man? Hey, make sure you hit subscribe on my channel too, man. Appreciate it. Uh, but hey, if you are listening, make sure you're hitting like on this channel so we get Travis more publicity across the interwebs. And I'll uh, make sure you subscribe to uh, him at Viker Podcast on Twitter, the Viker Podcast on YouTube. Uh, so go help him out. Hey, thanks for uh, uh, gracing your presence on my channel, J 48. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you know what I what I was hoping for was a big running back. And Aaron Jones is a nice little novelty for me because I really liked him. But I was looking I was looking for a, a you know a bigger back um, to go with Ty Chandler to be that thunder and lightning type of presence to get the short yardage to get the goal line be be feared in the red zone. Um, and Henry. you know it may and that be able to pass block. But uh, yeah. I think Aaron Jones was a nice little consolation in, in my book. And and honestly, apparently it was a big deal for KOC and Justin Jefferson loved it. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently Kevin O'Connell said he was doing cartwheels when they when they signed Aaron Jones. So, yeah, I think NFL players just recognize other NFL players and their talent. Yeah, like they see it on the sidelines. And 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 that's why I talk about. And you may have a different viewpoint. I don't know, but they're not looking at the draft going. I hope we get, you know, unless it's some freaked out stud, like I'm sure everybody's like, Oh, Caleb Williams or, or whatever, but um, they're not, it's almost like it's like when Kirk cousins, like, you know, coming back, I, I feel like they'd be a lot more comfortable about the season. If Kirk was coming back, they're probably not going Oh, I can't wait till we get that rookie who has to learn the entire offense. Uh, Kurt <laughs> took two years to learn himself. And, you know, I'm like, oh, I can't yeah. wait to catch passes from that left-handed dude. You know, I'm like, I don't know if they're doing that. Um, but I know if they seen them already in the NFL and they come to the team, like an Aaron Jones or like, shit, yeah, or, or Cashman yeah. or or Van Ginkle, like they respect the way those guys played and seen them play and, saw tape on him preparing for Miami two years ago. You know, it's like, uh, you know, I feel like they, they respect it. And I can see Justin Jefferson getting excited about Aaron Jones. Yeah. I think anything it, to help this running game. Yeah. And like I said, you can't underestimate taking someone else from the dark side from green Bay. Yeah. When we have a tendency to do that and I felt yeah. like it was the best trade in the world. They get, they get Greg Joseph. We get Aaron Jones. <laughs> yeah. I'm not mad about it. I, I, know but I, I, I did say the other day on Twitter, I said, watch Greg Joseph never miss an extra point. With I said Day. the same shit. <laughs> I did. I, I literally tweeted that. I said, watch Aaron Jones or yep. watch uh, Greg Joseph not miss another kick. That's just so, oh my Brutal. God. He said the Brutal. same thing. Yeah. Brutal. <laughs> oh, and, see, what's this? J dash. That's what CJ Ham is for. Oh yeah. Yeah, but yeah. you know, I want I want the threat too. But CJ Ham can yeah. catch out of the backfield. He's not a bad threat. Um, but how important is a? That's a good point. How important is a fullback in this offense, man? I mean, 
Well, I think the fullback's kind of a dying position, unfortunately. Um, but you talk about running backs being un, you know undervalued. That's 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 a fullback position is too. But um, I think, I, and I, I, I'm gonna be honest. I think CJ Ham is here just because he's a pillar on the team, uh, and they just they just don't want to hear the backlash of getting rid of him yet. But um, you know. Ring of Honor guy. Are we for running sure. them back with CJ Ham. <laughs> <laughs> I love CJ, and, and I think if I, I wish he did have a bigger role, um, you know, I, I would love for him to come in and pass block a little bit more. But yeah, you do kind of need that running threat. He'll get you that one two yards if you need it. Um, they don't utilize him much, but you know, he's just such a pillar. He used to be a guy that we'd give the ball on a fullback dive and he'd get the first yeah. down and stuff. Yeah. And you just and this don't was, see that anymore. If this was the 90s and early 2000s, man, CJ Ham be cooking. That dude be getting paid right now. Yeah, the way they use uh, here from Mike Gass, shout out to you, man. Make sure you hit like. Make sure you subscribe to both our channels. The way they use Ham, they might as well just carry another H-back tight end. Yeah. What do you, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they barely use him except for the first game of the season against the <laughs> Buccaneers where he got like yeah. 28 snaps or something like that. Yeah. I was like, hey, I was like, we were joking in the GG Boy, GG Sports podcast. Well, um, Jamie went to high school with him. Uh, and oh, okay. uh, we were joking about, I didn't, I, I did not have CG Ham being the center of our offense uh, on my bingo card in week one, but uh, he got. Well over 20 snaps in that, or I think he at least got 20 snaps in that game, and it just he didn't expect it. And then uh and on top of that, Madison like touched the ball like 28 times. It was like crazy. Yeah. It's like we were trying to force that run, force that um hard nosed football, and yeah, like if it's 1985 or something like that. Yep, exactly. But we still threw the ball 200, we got 270 yards in the first half. Yeah, which was crazy, but we only saw the ball three times in the second half that game. Yeah, we just need to be more consistent. And I felt yeah. like I, I was felt about like to say that. Yep, we, where we're failing was on first down, getting chunk yardage, and and failing on uh, short yardage plays. Uh, we just were not. We only could extend plays through the air, and yeah. this last season, and it's just it was non-existent on the ground. It felt like. It was just two, and we had a few games in there that we ran the ball pretty well, and Madison had a few good games, but it just was not consistent. How much do you think it's, and I've said this to other people, and I want your opinion, how much is it KOC, how much is it that offensive line, and how much is it the running back position? Who's Who's got the more fault, or if any? I think, it, I think it's Kevin O'Connell. I mean, I think you got to put it on coaching. At year one, I felt it was it was definitely him. Yeah. I definitely felt year one it was him. And yeah. I think, honestly, year two, uh, him not putting the right guy in there. Yeah. You know, uh, he's just hanging on to the other, you know, hanging on to Madison, uh, which I felt fine if he was getting the ball five times, five, eight times a game, but not the lead back. And yeah. he did have a couple good games, but choice of personnel. Yeah. Is his, is, it's, uh, it's on him. Cincinnati so, um, tush push. Oh God! Oh, twice. <laughs> I love twice Brandon Powell. The smallest oh. guy on the team yeah. pushing. I love Brandon Powell. I, I just gave him some love a little while ago, but he was not the right guy. And like you said, well, twice. It's not his fault. It's not. It's not. It's not but, Powell's yeah, fault. It wasn't. But man, and that that was one of the fears I had with Kirk Cousins coming back is we we would not be able to quarterback sneak anymore because of the Achilles. Yeah, that was one of my fears, yeah. and especially yeah. with Powell being the. I mean the same play, the <laughs> same play. I mean, do something different, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you know. It, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say it, you know. But if they if they made it work, we'd have been praising them. So it's just oh, how yeah. it goes. Be, yeah. Oh, that was brilliant. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Jesse needs to figure out the screen game. That would help a lot. Yeah, yep. you, you brought that up earlier, and we, yeah, uh, there was time for the first year. It was tight end screen, right? Tight end mm -hmm. screen. It's like T.J. Hawkinson. Uh, the his first game, uh, he had nine catches. Three were for negative yardage, but you know he had nine catches that game for like ninety yards, and everybody's like, "Oh shit!" But he would have had a hell of a lot more if he didn't throw three tight end screens to him that were behind the line of scrimmage. 
But uh, yeah, we, he got past that in year two, and I felt like he did have some had some good uh, screen plays, but not a lot of them. He doesn't do that. Yeah. But um, where, what kind of what what do you want to see more out of KOC this year? Well, I think we touched on it. I, you know, you want to see the ball on the ground a little bit more. You want to see him run the ball, get the run game established. Um, and, and I know, you know, maybe he just didn't trust Madison. I mean, obviously, he trusts him more than than Chandler. But I just maybe he just didn't trust Madison. Maybe with Aaron Jones being there, you'll you might see the run game being utilized a little bit more. That's just one thing I want to see. I mean, the pass game is great. Um, Kevin O'Connell's offense, as far as passing, is awesome. I have I have no knock against it. Um, it was it's you know, good with Nick Mullins and Kirk Cousins running it, but it doesn't. Yeah, the other two guys, it didn't seem that well. Do yeah, and, that, and that's why yeah. I said Penix probably gives us the best chance to start right away. Yeah, and I, I've also said too, and I, this may be another subject for another day, but you know, I feel like as good as Jaden Daniels is, if I feel like if we were to move up to get Jaden Daniels, that's a reach because we kind of saw, you know, how Kevin O'Connell coaches with a mobile quarterback. Um, Jaron Hall, he's kind of mobile. I kind of looked at him as like a, a poor man's Russell Wilson. Josh Dobbs. Now, don't get me wrong. Jaden Daniels is is light years ahead of Josh Dobbs and, and Jaron Hall, but um, the the mobility that's just not something that Kevin O'Connell seems to be able to prepare for. So now I did I did see an interview uh, with him being asked about Jaden Daniels, and he feels like he's a passer, like he yeah. can pass the ball. And I feel he like really he too. really can he really can, and he can do both. He can do both, but um, I just, in my opinion, I feel like if we were to move up to get Daniels, I feel like we were ruining. I feel like he he wouldn't he wouldn't uh, we we wouldn't bring the best out of him. I think he'd be fit better else uh, somewhere else. But we, I wouldn't be um, mad about it. But you know, I just think I it's think a vocal Vike must be done because I got too evil to hope o- over here. So we, and we we're now got like uh, twenty three people watching when we were about eleven. So we got a lot more people watching us now. So make sure. Uh, you guys, uh, Twitter X, Viker Podcast, YouTube at Viker Podcast. Go sub- make sure you subscribe. J98, it play plan A, trade up for JJ McCarthy. Plan B, draft uh, Penix Jr. and help out defense in round one. Doesn't sound like bad right now. I think uh, I think the fact that Penix's athletic ability is now shining uh, through the the absolute dog. I mean, he's been dogged on about, you know, not being, you know, athletic like these other guys. And now he's – those are elite, um, you know, numbers he put up at the position. Elite numbers, like 95 percentile type numbers. And so I, I feel like that's kind of shined through. He doesn't take off. He doesn't um, – he, he's not run first. He ran – I think uh, I heard Purple Daily say that he ran 30 times for eight yards. Well, they subtract sack yardage and running, you know, yeah. running in, in college. So that's mm-hmm. you know, but he only ran thirty times. So he's not he he's a pass first guy. We had the same problem with um, uh, Teddy Bridgewater. We wanted him to run a lot more um, yeah. because you know take that take that yardage. You know, maybe that's something he could do. I mean, obviously he can run fast, and I think he's good in the pocket. So I think people are warming up to Penix. And it would be kind of cool to get, you know, in the, in the plan B. That's not a bad plan B. If, no, it's don't not. You think? Yeah, I agree. I love Penix. Uh, Ray, KOC hates running backs. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Keep picks and take Penix. I, this is go- this is going to be the biggest trend all week, I, or the whole week, is, uh, hey, Penix, 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 or at least through the weekend. Um, yeah. I don't th- – Home stop watch bias from Johnny Football. Uh, make sure you follow Bite Size uh, Vikes if you guys are watching this. He's a, he has a great channel and he goes live on uh, draft day. We go live on draft day too. Um, big Penix in, uh, energy from Young Cring- Cringe Gamer. Uh, I think there's going to be some people saying penis by mistake uh, if we if we uh, draft him. Uh, just yeah. wait and take Penix easy. Okay, so yeah, I think there's more fans of Penix now. I mean. Me and the GG boys, I think uh, everybody in our circle likes him, but it's not our first choice. Um, is there you? You were kind of liking both JJ, and, you know, in May, and 
Uh, it sounds like you're not excited about Daniels because of the, the play style and how he fits with KOC. But is there a guy that you're like, that's my plan A? Uh, yeah, plan A is Drake May. Plan B is McCarthy for me. And yeah. what's, how big is the separation for you? Um, Well, it's not much of a separation. It's just what – you know, obviously we've seen McCarthy, and, and I know the biggest knock on him is he didn't throw a lot. But if you look at last year, he did. Um, the, the first year he, he played quarterback, he threw all the time. Um, I know that's the biggest knock on him. Um, but he's playing with NFL level talent in college. Drake May is not, and Drake May was doing a lot of off script, uh, keeping the play alive. He didn't have a, a, a he didn't have that great of an offensive line. Didn't have weapons down the field that were going to be playing on Sundays. It's, I just kind of like what I saw, what he can do, uh, is versus McCarthy. We kind of, you know, I think McCarthy would be fine. Obviously, you, you know, he, he's he, again, he's played for, he's played for Harbaugh. He's played an NFL level type college program, but. It's the it's you know it's the improvise and 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 extending the play and, and I just I really love what I saw to Drake May. All right, I love correcting people. Randy Lewis says Teddy ran like a five point four forty. L O L. Here's two. Let me compare a guy. Patrick Mahomes ran a four eight. Teddy Bridgewater four point seven eight. Thank you very much. <laughs> you are wrong, Randy. <laughs> Teddy Bridgewater. 4.78, but you know who ran a, also ran a 4.8 was uh, Peyton Manning. So I don't yeah. know. How, it, you definitely different, different. You would not think of Peyton Manning being able to scramble, but you see Mahomes have like a sixth sense. But Teddy just never used it whatsoever. And I felt he like he was going to start using it until he got hurt in preseason. Yeah. And uh, what do you guys think about the Bears fans already uh, roasting Caleb Williams calling? And I won't read that out loud. Uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, there's going to be fans. There's fans that hated Kirk Cousins and will t- crap on them for every little thing. Uh, there's yeah. going to fan- be guys that are going to hate J.J. McCarthy. I have a yep. 60-40 split of, of – they don't – there's 40% of – you know, I did, I was like 300 people probably voted on it. 40% didn't even want him at all. Like 40% wow. of the – you know, didn't want him at all. And when we went to Drake and May – 15% didn't want him at all. So yeah. it's 85 to, you know, that's 15 compared to 40. There's a bigger divide against JJ McCarthy. So there's going to be guys that are going to be trashing on whoever we take. Absolutely. I'm sure, I'm sure the bears aren't any different. No, so, that fan base sucks anyways. <laughs> yeah. It's no, Hey guys, make sure you hit like push this video. Uh, you got, you got a few more minutes in you, man. Yeah, I think we can go. I, I got, let me check my battery. Cause I, I didn't, I didn't plug up. I got about I, – I'm 35%. I, I think I'll be all right. Uh, Drake May is, uh, and his upside could be the next Josh Allen is worth the risk. Uh, do you feel like that's a fair comparison? Yeah, I think so. I, and I think you, you kind of get that from his size. Um, yeah, I think – you know, and, and you see a lot of – you see a lot of off script, a lot of improvision from Josh Allen too. So, yeah, I think the, the, the similarities are, are fine, yeah. And Josh Allen was like 55% uh, completion percentage in college. It wasn't yeah. spectacular. I mean, that would have been good right. in the 80s. But, yeah. you know, nowadays, I mean, you got guys like uh, Bo Nix and J.J. Mc- you know, Bo Nix is like 77% and like – and JJ McCarthy like 73 and shit like that. And you got yeah. Josh Allen at 55. Um, so I feel like I feel like it is a fair comparison. What I liked about it was uh, I saw some plays where just people kind of couldn't bring him down. Yeah. Um Drake May. And I kind of like that. I kind of like that. Yeah, I got boom boom skull. Um to make sure you don't uh give out your name. He might look you up. Um, <laughs> nice having you, Boom Boom Skull. You were invited to come on my show, but you never responded to me in that day long DM fest we had. You're always welcome, man. Um, it's crazy you guys can say the F word, but the acronym is taboo. Uh, you know, I've been I, I've been kicked off to uh, TikTok. I don't know about YouTube, but hey, Google's uh, <laughs> I don't want I don't want anything from Google either, man. This is this is gonna one day be my livelihood. Uh, Drake May, J.J. McCarthy, and Michael Penix pro comparisons. Uh, so we said Drake May, Josh Allen's uh, fine. I wouldn't – or Herbert, I guess. Um, but I think the Josh Allen being raw coming out of college and Drake May being kind of raw too, 
Uh, I want to go back and look at tape from 2022, like KOC, or was it 2022? Yeah, a like KOC had said where he had better talent around him. Who's your comparison to J.J. McCarthy? And I'll tell you who someone said to me who he was like. You know, that's interesting. I don't really have a comparison. Um, now, I've seen a lot of – and I, I'm, I'm 35, so I'm old enough to remember this, but I've seen a lot of Jake Plummer comparisons. Um, you know, um, I can see that a little bit. But uh, I don't really have a comparison. I will say this, and I'm sure I'm going to get roasted for it. Um, a lot of the, uh, and I'm not comparing him 100% before I say this, but a lot of the, 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 you know, in provision that he does a lot of the rollouts, a lot of the ways he, he throws the ball a little Mahomes S to it. Uh, I'm not saying JJ McCarthy's patch Mahomes, but, um, he's, he's got a little bit of Mahomes to him. I see. Um, I know people and I kind of agree that Caleb Williams kind of feels like that Mahomes guy. Um, yeah, he does. But, um, but, you know, the guy that someone brought up and I'm like, yeah, I guess if someone compared him to Joe Montana. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's a that, that's an interesting a good one. Comparison. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'll good. take it. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. Yeah. Um, God, it's really it is really hard for me to 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 do a comp on J.J. McCarthy just because you haven't seen enough of him. You're right. But I did yeah. bring I, um, J98. I did make this comparison to Michael Penix as being a left-handed Warren Moon. So, what do you think of that? <laughs> Absolutely. All right, Dave. What are your thoughts of KSU's ability to develop QB talent? I'd like to hear your thoughts. Thanks. Uh, I haven't seen it yet. He's only he's gotten uh, he's gotten veterans. People people br- bring this up. Uh, Boom and Skull that that. Uh, KOC has this uh, sixth sense of, you know, anybody's going to be good. And then we, f- we figured out that, uh, you know, we've had two guys in that, that weren't good uh, last year. So, but the guys and who's Kirk, he's going to go out and get his guy. He's got, he wants to bring in his guy. Well, he's damn near crying at the uh, press conference when they're saying, <laughs> then they finally, when he finally had to come to terms and f- meet the press, KOC's head was looking at the table the whole time. Uh, he just he lost his quarterback. His guy was Matthew Stafford. His guy was Kirk Cousins. These are guys he he likes to have and likes to coach. Um, so I think uh, I think he's salivating at a Drake May. I yeah. think I think uh, I think he that might be his first choice. Uh, I could see that. I I think he likes the talent of the other guys. So I think uh, I think that's a guy, and I think he can develop guys, and I think it's a type. I'm worried like you are. I bring that question up to everybody. Can he coach a um, Can he coach a Jaden Daniels? Um, he he didn't seem to be able to get. I mean, Dobbs that had two great quarters. Once one against Atlanta, and the first quarter again, or the second quarter against New Orleans, and he had a decent first half against Denver, but. Um, the, he was improvising. This yeah. was and he, this wasn't this was you know a couple of those touchdowns was all on him. He 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 foregone throwing to a, a wide ass guy in the back of the end zone to go run the ball and score a touchdown. And you'll take it, but that is not his type of guy. And I think the guy that probably fits the mold and the guy that he feels like he could uh, mold would be like a Drake May. And I think. But I think he can, um, with an off season or a couple of years, get a and tailor his offense around that he couldn't do with Dobbs. He couldn't do with a rookie like Jaron Hall. Um, I I did I do worry about whether or not he can coach a Jaden Daniels. I think he has a type. What do you think? Yeah, I completely agree. I think I think he has a a, a specialty. He has a type, and and like I mentioned before, Jaden Daniels is, is an incredible talent. Um, well, I would love to see Jaden Daniels be utilized too. And I think if you're a fan of football, you want to see Jaden Daniels be utilized. And I don't think he will be here. You know something I heard today, and uh, I knew it was uh, Florio talking to uh, Josh Allen, or mm-hmm. sorry, Paul Allen. Mm-hmm. Um, Florio was talking to Paul Allen. Paul Allen brought up the fact that. Josh McCown was the quarterback that threw the touchdown 
on the push out when he was like quarterback of the Cardinals. Yeah. And then changed the rule. Yeah. I didn't know that today. So that was, and that's my lead in to Josh Allen. Uh, but it, when we, when they push out rule has changed is because Josh Allen threw a touchdown. We threw, we pushed the guy out of bounds. He didn't get any feet in and they called it a touchdown because the rule back then was he could have got down if they didn't push him out. Right. Thank God they changed that rule, but um, not early enough because that costs us the playoffs. And uh, but Josh, um, Josh McCown, he coached Drake May yeah. in high school, and he was the mentor uh, with the Jets for for um, Sam Darnold. Yep. How much do you feel like he has the influence on getting a Sam Darnold in here or scouting a Drake May? Uh, yeah, I think. Um, well, I go back when they hired um, when they hired McCown. I thought the the right ones on the wall that they were going to probably go after Drake May, regardless if Kirk Cousins stayed or not. Um, and you think about like you just mentioned Sam Darnold. Uh, something I just heard this past week I didn't know either, but Sam Darnold and McCown would go and watch um, Drake May um, play, uh, whether it was um, college games if they could get to him. Obviously, McCown coached Drake May in high school. Sam Darnold would come to the high school games. Um, so it seems like these three are just kind of linked together. Um, so, I mean, if if it means that we go get Drake May and he develops under a guy that he's familiar with or, or even Sam Darnold that he's familiar with, um, I just see a whole lot of upside to it. Got a uh, good question here, Boom. Didn't, K- didn't KOC bring Mullins here? Would that be KOC's type? Yeah. 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 He just didn't have the arm strength like a Kirk Cousins had or or some of these other guys. You know, Mullins, Mullins I don't know about you, but Mullins ran the offense very well. He did. I mean, yeah. I mean, very the, well. He turned the ball over, which you knew was going to happen. Um, I mean, he's, he's, he's a gunslinger, you know. But um, I thought he did well. I thought he did just fine. I mean, he had – He was brought uh, here to be the backup, though, right? He was, so, exactly. Yeah, And it was a big-time upgrade at the backup position. It, it was, yeah. Compared to what we had – Yes, yes. I still say he shall not be named, and now he's coaching for the fucking Packers. I guess <laughs> I we got we won in that trade too. Yeah, um, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. Keep your draft picks. Take Penix. I got it, Ray. We like Penix. <laughs> uh, we we like him too, man. He is a Penix. nice backup plan. Honest to God. Yes, he is. And you know what? I, we might be wrong, and he should have been the guy we've been going after. We should have went after. Yeah. I I can I can see that. I can see him being, oh my God, thank God we lucked out and got Penix, or, or you know, it's like, you know, he, he's going to be the best guy in the draft. I, he could be anywhere. I, I, I think he has a, a high floor, and I think he could be as high as the best guy in the draft, just because, I mean, two years in a row with 4,500 plus yards and 40 touchdowns a, or higher a year, I think. And it's like, that's just crazy production. I mean, I could see him, and I again, I said that already. You know, how yeah. I, I think he could start, you know, week one, a more and more so than some of the other uh, quarterbacks. Yogi, what's up? JJ McCarthy plus Alex Smith. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think he is. I think McCarthy is even more mobile than Alex is. Yeah, and I think has a stronger arm. Don't you think? Not a bad comparison, though. Yeah. Not a bad comparison, though. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And the personality, right? The personality, yeah. the leader of the team. Yeah, definitely, I could see that. I think he has a. But with hindsight's twenty twenty. We now know Alex Smith had limitations. I think that our strengths for what that we see up front with JJ McCarthy, but uh, in that's mobility and and uh, throwing the ball and the arm. You know, you know what I worry about is uh, I've seen balls that fluttered in his game tape. And I'm mm-hmm. worried that it's because of his hand size. I, I people on my channel know I talk about hand size way yeah. fucking too much. But nine <laughs> inches, that's that's yeah. smaller than Dante Culpepper's. Yeah. And he was a, and we complained about his hand size back in the day. Yeah. Um Mullins also came from San Francisco, just like Darnold. Yeah. I mean, everybody talking about oh god, San Francisco influence. Well, frick, that's where he came from. And he's had almost he's had well over I think it, he had two four almost four hundred yard games with us. He has he's had he's he's uh, Nick Mullins has orchestrated two blowouts in this league, you know. So it's like 
he can play. Um, he was put into situations where our defense just failed us. He had yeah. to play from behind. There was uh, that play where that guy, he, um, it's third down. If he gets sacked, the clock might run out, and we might not get a kick of field goal. So he tries to he tries to, um, to throw it away. It hits the guy, pops up, catches it, and it's a pick. Then there's another play that he, he did something similar. So people look and see those two bonehead plays and right Nick Mullins off. And if you remember, he was about to – we were driving the field and he threw that pick late against the Lions. But we almost beat the fucking Lions. I did, yeah. Um, yeah so it, he, he can – and I was one. I didn't want to go out and get a bridge. If we're going to do a bridge, we already got one. That's the way I was yeah. looking at it. Um, yeah, so I, I would have been way. fine Nick Mullins being our bridge while we got the rookie. So yeah. people know how I feel about that. Um, uh, what's up, School Mafia? I I I told I, my uh, my viewership definitely picked up. We got 33 people watching right now. Uh, if you guys are just joining us, this is Travis from Viker Podcast, Twitter X Viker Podcast, YouTube at Viker Podcast. Look at the scroll below. Make sure you go subscribe. Uh, so was, was it an advocate? I don't know what was that part. Ray KOC seemed a little hesitant on Penix in an interview. I saw not sure on the board. So here's the thing. I don't know how well we're in on Penix because there are teams that already looked at him and it's deep. Um, and we weren't one of them. Do you feel like, do you feel like it's like, Hey, we don't want to show our hand that make sure people don't know we're not interested in them. And just in case someone jumps us, maybe he is our backup plan. What, what do you f- feel about that? Yeah, I think the whole situation is you look at everything in the recent days and, and recent weeks, and if you Quasi and Kevin O'Connell, whoever whoever gets the opportunity to speak, uh, even even uh, Mark Wilf at the owners meet when he sat down with NFL Network, it no one's really showing their hand uh, right now, and they're not going to. Um, you want them to, but they're not going to. And um, yeah, I think the interview that he was alluding to, I forgot who it was that commented, but when when Kevin O'Connell was on the uh, Pat McAfee show. Uh, and, you know, he said he looks for a quarterback. He, you look for accuracy and a quarterback. And then McAfee's like, oh, so like Penix. And he's like, uh, well, you know, you look for accuracy. You know, it, it was really funny. Um, yeah, I saw but, that too. Yeah. <laughs> it was hilarious. But he's not going to he's not going to show his hand, I don't think. And, you know, man, we sit here and talk. Penix might be their, their plan A. You just never know. And uh, boom, boom! Uh, this is your first time watching my show, so the the other guys that are in here have been on here before, uh, watch me. But uh, I'll give you some credit for you showing up, and maybe one or two other guys. But I'm not going to give you too much credit. So there you go. <laughs> Mullins is a poor man's far. Yes, because yeah, of the lack of arm strength. I feel yeah. good comparison. Just as many, um, you know, far has thrown more picks than anybody in the NFL. Um. But yeah, good good comparison. And guess what? They went to the same college. They sure and did. Mullins broke all Favre's records. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, good good comparison. Southern Miss. We did not pay attention, and so and that's why I brought up the Penix thing. Uh, Two evil to hope is right. We didn't uh, we didn't give Harrison Smith the time of day. We recently had Wabi on here, and he told us about how uh, there. You may not have heard this, but. Uh, apparently they did a mock draft and uh, one of the guys picked the Vikings. One of the mock drafters picked the Vikings um, to take Harrison Smith. And they used his image as the, as the, uh, the mock draft that they put out there on the internet. And they had no idea that that was a guy we were targeting um, and didn't want anybody to know about it. So they immediately took it down. Um, does it's a story from Wabi? Um, and uh, yeah, and this could be a situation, there could be situations where hey, we already know Penix's tape and he is our plan B. Why give him the time of day, right? Why give yeah. him the time of day? I don't even remember, but I don't even know if I remember if we talked to him at the at the combine. We may have already talked to him there. I'd have to go back and uh find that out. Uh, Dave hates boom boom. Is, it's okay though. I still support Dave. Uh, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah, you're a, you're a piece of work, honestly, man. You're a piece of work. But hey, like I said, I'm, I would love to get you behind out from behind the veil so we can all see who Boom Boom is. So you're DM me. You can be my next guest on my show, man. We don't have to go live. 
Uh, this is just a choice today, but I I invited you and I didn't get an answer from you. So hey, DM me, I'll get you on. Uh, Mullins is expired diet far. That's <laughs> beautiful to hope is I don't know if he's ever been on your show, but make sure you go over and watch Viker podcast, man. But too evil to hope um, has a lot of one liners, uh, and that's probably one of his best right there. Randy Lewis, the guy, uh, the one guy I have yet to see anyone bring up to KOC or Quasi or them tells bring up is Knicks. I pray that's not a sign. I pray that's not a sign. So the reverse effect, um, do you know? We, and we talked about this earlier, guys, when half as many people were watching. But uh, Biker here is not a big fan of Bo Nix. Um, I am pretty lukewarm on him. I think he's going to pretty decent career. I consider him a second round talent. Um, but yeah, I don't see us. I don't think that's a guy we're gunning for. Um, I, I don't, I don't feel like that, but Hey, I think he's got talent. Uh, he's got mobility. He's got accuracy. 77%, man. It's crazy. He's got two years of really good production. They, uh, there's some guy pulled out all his behind the uh, line of scrimmage throws and he has like 3,500 yards. Um, throwing past the line, you know, past the line of scrimmage, he's in 30 some touchdowns. Uh, so the and people talk about all the short passes and shit like that, but he's got he's got he's got throws down the field, he's made every throw in college that you're gonna want in the NFL. Uh, he's 58 mile an hour compared to like 61 with JJ McCarthy. He's got plenty of arm strength. He's, uh, I don't think he's as big a uh, scrambler, he's but he's just as fast as McCarthy. He's just not as agile, but he's also a little bigger, a little stronger of a, a player and older. Obviously, he's three years older than him, so that's probably gonna that'll come with time. Uh, I I kind of expect JJ McCarthy. Um, I I I, I kind of expect JJ, JJ McCarthy if he goes to the right place and the Vikings being one of them that he would thrive. You feel that way? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I think any quarterback, if they look at if they look at, at the teams that are going to draft them, I think this is the best situation to come into is Minnesota. Yeah. And yeah, there's some and he's one out of the top 15 QBs. He's uh, talk about he's like the sixth most accurate. And the guy that's the least out of the 15 is Drake May. Yeah. Um, so there is some there's some red flags on every player. Um, yeah. yeah. And. And uh, I, I think the only red flag really for me on a Penix is like his knee to me. Yeah. I, don't, it, I just yeah. feel like the fact that I hate watching left-handed people throw the ball. The only thing of Penix, you know, uh, it, I'm scared if he does run, the one time he does decide to take off running and it's against Detroit and Kirby Joseph comes across oh, the middle. And <laughs> 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 now, this is a good point. Um a huge part of the NFL game is completing short passes, keep the chains moving. Uh, that's the freaking West Coast offense. Knicks will do yeah. very well in the NFL. Um, watching Knicks throw, um, he he's he is throwing windows and slant routes. He's throwing in the windows, and I liked that about him. I thought I thought if we don't run slants on the Vikings for some reason, we I, I always like that that follow the double slant with the guy follows. And just you hit the if you don't hit that guy, that guy is going to be open. We don't we don't do that. And I think maybe we if we had a guy that could that we would do it. And that's it. and then he did that a lot in Oregon. I think he's I think he's really good about hitting windows and and you know lanes and shit like that. So I, I I'm I'm higher on Knicks than most people. He gets dogged on about more than any quarterback in this draft class. I think. The thing um, about Knicks, uh, I, I don't, I don't hate them. Um, I think any quarterback would be fine in Kevin O'Connell's offense, and I think Knicks would do just fine. But I also think, and this may be a little bit of a hot take, I think you just let the thirty-five-year-old version of Bo Nix walk away in free agency to Atlanta. So, Bo Nix is a lot more mobile than Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> he is, but I think as far as, uh, <laughs> I think as far as the play you're going to get out of him, I mean, there's just better quarterback options in the draft. And, and well, yeah, and, uh, I mean, so. we're talking about playing C or D. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, it's not wasting picks. You got to. Um, he's. I think they're talking about uh, trading up. Not is not wasting picks. You just make the pick, get your quarterback, and forget about those picks. Um, I, I can. Great. I'm good on Penix at eleven. 
Um, it may have to. You may have to, if you if those four guys go, you may have to take them because I don't feel like you get past uh, Denver or um, or the Raiders. Yeah, if they don't uh, jump in front of you to get them, or yeah, maybe they jump in front of you because maybe yeah. Atlanta trades down with one of the you know, yep. you know why not? Why not get more? You know they they don't have a complete roster yet. They may need yeah. more pieces at defense. Yeah, and they could get they can get a defender at thirteen or fourteen or twelve, so yeah. Um, so hey man, we've been on quite a bit, and uh, twenty five people are watching right now. Make sure you hit like on your way out the door, man, and make sure you subscribe to uh, the Viker Podcast on YouTube. Follow them on Twitter X at Viker uh, Viker Podcast. It was a pleasure having you on, Travis. Any last Hi. words? What do you think, man? Any last words going into this draft? Uh, you know, I, I, I've said this for a couple of weeks now, and people worry about the, the the price to pay to move up, I, you know, and the maybe packaging the next year's first round pick, whatever. I think if, if you have your guy on the whiteboard, whether it's Drake May, J.J. McCarthy, it may be, it may be Jaden Daniels. If it's KOC's guy, he wants them. Pay whatever, go get them. Go get the quarterback of the future. Let's go get them, guys. Let's go Let's, get I that man. I don't care. I don't care. Let's go get him. Go get his ass. Let's go. All right, Skull Vikes. That's right, Skull Vikes, baby.